Okay, we'll have a conversation. So, um, let's take a look at a different rule. Um, if you guys remember last time, we talked about uh, using distorted property. The next thing what I want to do is I want to give you an idea of how to be able to solve for this by memorizing a special word. And the special word we're going to memorize is FOIL. And Whoa. hence, this is also being, going to be called the FOIL technique. So why are we going to use FOIL and what does FOIL represent? FOIL represents our placement and how we're going to multiply our certain terms. So the first one, F, represents first. So what that means is I'm going to multiply the first two terms of each binomial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little F in front of or above my two first terms so you guys can understand what are the first terms. If you look at the first binomial, if you were to read from left to right, you'd notice that negative x squared and negative x are the first terms in each binomial. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. O represents outer, or I just like to call the outside terms. So if you look at your binomial, if you look at this expression as a whole, the, out, the farther outside terms, or the farther outer terms, are going to be x squared and 5. Those are on the, out, like the outer edges, right? So that's why those are going to be called my outside terms. Then i represents the inside terms. If those are on the outer, the, which 5 and negative x are going to be on the inside terms. All right? So I just call these inner or the inside. And then L represents the last. So again, if you're reading from left to right, if these two are your first two terms you read, these are going to be the last two terms you read. All right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, all we're going to do is just multiply each one of those terms. So the first, I said to multiply negative x squared times negative x. So just write it out. Negative x squared times negative x. Outside, multiply these terms. Negative x squared times 5. Inside, 5 times negative x. And last, 5 times 5. Okay? Negative x times, or sorry, negative x squared times negative x. Remember, there's an exponent here. We need to add the exponents, right? And the exponents, a negative times a negative provides a positive. So therefore, I'm going to add x to the third power. Mm -hmm. Right? The negatives cancel out, and I add my exponents because I'm multiplying them. Here, I'm multiplying a number. I'm multiplying a number times a variable. When you just multiply a number times a variable, it's just going to remain your number times a variable. So this becomes now a negative 5x squared. No, I was just wondering if you're ready. Oh, I don't have any half writing. You did? Whatever. Now you still my word. So here comes the inside. 5 times negative x is equal to a negative 5 times x. And then the last, 5 times 5 equals 25. All right? So now, ladies and gentlemen, all we simply need to do is just write out each one of these answers. So I have x cubed minus 5x squared minus 5x plus 25. You take what is your what your term is, and that's going to tell you if it's subtraction or addition. Then, do any of these have the same terms that I can combine? No. Nope. So I can't simplify anymore further. And you also notice how it's in descending order, right? Setting order of exponents, that's what it's in standard form. So that's how you multiply using the formula.